How do I discern God's will in my life? That's the talk I'm going to give. That's the talk Gary Stevens has asked me to give. And it's a difficult talk to do because it's so personal. Our faith is personal. And so for me to talk about and share with you how I personally experience God in my life and discern his will means I have to go really deep within myself and be as honest as possible and truthful as possible. And that's not easy to do. It's It takes a lot of searching and it takes a lot for me to be clear because I've never spoken about this before. And it's one thing having an idea and knowing how I discern God's will, but it's another to actually speak about it in a precise way. For example, if I ask you the same question, how do you discern God's will in your life? What's the first thing that comes to you? You have to go deep within. That's the first thing you have to reflect and you have to be truthful to yourself because it also involves, well, what's stopping me from discerning God's will in my life? What's getting in my way? And so that's what I want to share. And hopefully you can relate to what I'm saying. Because what I've also learned is the way I discern God's will in my life might not necessarily be the way you do it. God reaches us in different ways. And he works with our personality. He works with our temperament. He works with our circumstances. He works with our history. He works with our family. And everybody's family and personality and circumstances are unique to them. And so God does not work against us. He works with us and he works for us. And one thing I have definitely learned is if you want to discern God's will in your life, then God has to be in your life and he has to be number one. 27 years ago, I gave my life to God. I came home from a youth group where people were telling me who God is and I didn't know anything about God. And so for the first time, I'm hearing about Jesus Christ and what he's done for me and how he wants to be fully involved in my life and how he wants to have a personal relationship with me. So I went to bed and I said, God, if you are real and if you truly do care about me and if you truly do want to be in my life, then here I am. I gave, give my life to you and I ask you to just take full control because I want you to be number one. And that has never stopped. Every single day for 27 years, I've always wanted God to be number one. Even though obviously he hasn't always been number one. I've been number one. I've done the things I wanted to do. I've been selfish and self-centered. I've made mistakes. I've got things going on in me that are blocking my relationship with God. But again, God uses all of that. He works with all of that. And that's exactly what he's done with me. I started off at 16 years old with my relationship with God with no qualifications from school except for a C in drama. It was the only qualification. It was the only grade I had and it was the only subject that I really enjoyed. I did karate for 10 years. My hero was Bruce Lee. I looked up to him and I thought I would love to be an actor like he is and I would love to be a karate actor especially when the Karate Kid film came out and that was an inspiration and of course then I definitely wanted to be an actor but of course that was just a dream and it faded and then after giving my life to God I remember just two years later sitting in the room of a priest talking to him and he asked me what do I want to do with my future and I said to him I haven't got a clue and over those six months of seeing him because I worked down in the south of England I worked in Butlands as a lifeguard. I would constantly go to speak to him and listen to him because God was so alive in him. And he would always ask me the same question. And he'd always respond with saying, John, you're not allowed to say you haven't got a clue. What do you want to do with your life? What is on your heart? But I'd always say, I haven't got a clue. And I guess I didn't have a clue because I didn't think high enough. I didn't think I had any opportunities or possibilities I came from a working class background. My mother was a dinner lady and a cleaner in Asda. And my dad was a flagger. So at that age, I had no idea what was possible. And then I met another priest and he's seen something in me. And so he encouraged me to go to college and get the qualifications that I needed. And so I did. And that desire was there. He just needed to fan it a little bit. He ne I just needed that little bit of support and encouragement. And the other priest that I was speaking to about what to do with my life, he knew psychology and theology, and of course, he was Catholic. And here I am, 16 years old, 
sitting on his couch. I was Church of England, didn't know anything about the Catholic Church, and he was beginning to mentor me, and I fell in love with the Catholic Church. But I was also drawn towards psychology because of him and theology as well. So the desires were there, and what God was doing now that I look back, he was pulling them out. He was drawing them out of me. So today, and I'm going to keep talking about this as well, today I would say if you want to know what God is, God's will is for your life, number one, God has to be in your life in the first place and he has to be number one in your life. But also pray for the desire. I say to God all the time, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. All I need from you is the desire to do it because sometimes it's just not there. I need the desire to do it. And then when you give me that desire, I'll do whatever you want because I trust you. I trust you completely. So it takes desire, but it also takes trust as well. And trust means that you trust God more than you trust yourself. And you're willing to go wherever God sends you and do whatever he wants to do with you. But I also need my trust to increase. It's not something I'm born with. I'm not born with trusting in God completely. I have to ask God to increase my faith in him. I have to ask him to give me more trust in him to do whatever he wants me to do, to go wherever he wants me to go. And so we're talking about prayer. We're talking about the importance of prayer. How do I know what God's will is for me in my life? Prayer. I have to ask God to give me that trust, give me the desire to do what he wants me to do and to bring the people into my life that can support me and encourage me. But also I need help that I don't give up when I do what he wants me to do. So here I am at college, not really having any qualifications from school, having to learn all these different subjects in a year with my focus now on university, which was like the biggest thing. I couldn't imagine going to university. And so I'm doing all these different qualifications and it's getting overwhelming. It's too much for me. I want to quit. I want to give up. The desire is not there anymore. It was in the beginning. It got me there, but then it started to wean away and I needed, I needed help. I needed grace. And if it wasn't for this priest who was constantly giving me that kick up the backside to keep going and not give up, I probably would have given up. So God speaks to you through people and he sends you the right people at the right time. Now, if you'd have asked me when I was 16 years old, if you'd have said to me, John, this is what you're going to be doing with your life. You're going to college. You're going to get all those qualifications you didn't get at school. Then you're going to university. You're going to get a degree in psychology, theology, and religious studies. Then you're going to go to Italy and learn how to speak Italian. Then you're going to Spain and learn how to speak Spanish. Then you're going to do a, a teacher training degree. You're going to be a school teacher in a classroom. Then you're going to go to America and you're going to do a master's degree in theology. You're going to be taught by Scott Hahn and live in his house for a year. And after that, you're going to you, you're going to Florida. You're going to be a youth minister for three years. Then you're going to come back and you're going to be a Catholic speaker at a national conference. You're going to travel around the world giving talks. And after that, well, that's where we are now. You're going to be an actor. If you'd have told me all of those things were going to happen to me when I was 16 years old, I would never have believed you. There is no way I would have believed you. And the reason why I want to be an actor now is because God's given me that desire and he's pulled it right out of me from my childhood. And I never even knew that was possible. In fact, the priest that brought me into the church when I was 16 years old, he said to me, you should go to RADA, you should go to drama school. And for some reason, it just wasn't the right time and it wasn't what I was interested in. I was interested, I needed to learn and study. And so my whole journey has been a process, but I trusted in God. And the secrets, I think, of knowing what God's will is for you, for you in your life is you have to live one moment at a time. God didn't reveal everything that I've done in the last 27 years in that moment. He just, he worked with me every single day, revealing one moment at a time. So sitting in that priest's office saying, I don't know what God wants me to do when I'm 40, but by then I hope I'm married and have kids because that's what everybody else is doing. That's not living in the moment. That's living in the future. And what God was saying to me there and then was, John, you're already doing what I want you to do. You're sitting here with the priest, having a conversation and building a relationship. And being, I'm drawing you into the Catholic Church. And so one moment at a time, and that's what he did. I asked for the desires. He gave it to me. I asked for more trust. He gave it to me. Most importantly, he gave me spiritual directors. You need a spiritual director because what if my desire is wrong? What if it's off? 
the spiritual directors there to keep you back on track. And so God spoke to me through them. So last year, during lockdown, when I'm no longer a speaker because churches are closed, conferences are closed, everything is closed, I'm thinking, now what do I do? Here I am with my dad and brother, who are not very well, my brother with the mental illness. My dad's just been told he has vascular dementia. I'm in their house, stuck, quarantined, you know, locked in, locked down, locked up, because it felt like prison. And I'm thinking, how am I going to survive this mentally? It's going to be torture, because nobody knows when we're going to be, you know, set free again. That's what it felt like. I was trapped and I wanted to be set free. At least given all these talks meant that I could have all the breaks I wanted. But then I was speaking to my spiritual director. In fact, this is what happened first of all. I was watching a couple of films. I was watching Breaking Bad. And I learned, I read online that he never went to drama school. He just he was just cast. And all of a sudden now he's an actor. And he's a brilliant actor. So speaking to my spiritual di- director, who used to live and work in Hollywood. And he was a music producer as well as doing films himself. He encouraged me to go to acting school. And so that was number one. Straight away, I thought, God must want this because my spiritual director is saying yes. When I thought, I honestly thought he would have said no. I, for some reason, I thought it's too worldly. It's not of God. It's not Catholic. It's not the done thing. But of course, there are Catholic actors out there as well. And so he said yes. And so that encouraged me. So I went to class and I fell in love with it straight away. It was like, this is what I was created for. This is what God has prepared me for. And so with my family circumstances, with my brother's mental illness, my dad was his vascular dementia, and with my mother dying of emphysema, you know, the whole history of family and struggles I'm able to now to bring to acting because I can draw from personal experiences. And so now I was beginning to see how God used everything. Even standing on stage, giving talks at New Dawn with the cameras, again, God had prepared me. And, and, and for me, that was... That was a massive sign that this is what God wanted me to do. So I went to class, but I wanted to learn faster. So I looked on the internet and found that there's another teacher down in Chester. And at that time, I was watching a couple of TV shows. And they, the actors in there inspired me as well, because they were from Liverpool. And now they're doing really well. Stephen Graham, is, he's in everything, and he's a brilliant actor from Liverpool. Jodie Comer, another brilliant actor who lives in the same area as me. And so when I went down to Chester and I spoke with this teacher, I had this private one-on-one session. Straight after the class, he said, I'd like you to join my advanced class on Monday nights. I'd only been to a couple of classes. And all of a sudden, he wants me to do advanced acting with other students who'd been doing it for over two or three years. And then it turns out he taught Jodie Comer. He was one of her teachers. And look how well she's doing. And so I said yes. And then I went to the place where he said they do the acting. And of course, here's me, John, the speaker, who's been at New Dawn, Walsingham, loves Our Lady and been given talk after talk after talk on Our Lady. And so he's invited me to do this acting. And so I went and he told me the name of the place where it was. It just so happened to be in a church. It was an Anglican church. So we went into the church and what am I surrounded with? I'm surrounded with statues of Our Lady. And right behind me is a shrine dedicated to Our Lady of Walsingham. And so for me, this is just constant confirmation. And as I was talking to my spiritual director about my childhood desire to be an actor, he was um, encouraging me, me to do that. And I was explaining that the only qualification I got was a C in drama. It was the only thing I enjoyed. And not too long after that, I was clearing out the attic. In fact, it was the next day I cleared out the attic and there's a shoebox. So I thought, let's see what's in it before I throw it out. And on the very top is a report card that I got from school and I opened it up, first page, and it was the qualification I got in drama. I didn't even know I had it. I hadn't seen it in about 30 years. And so again, it was like, wow, perfect timing that I'm looking at this. And then I seen a memory card. And again, I'm cleaning stuff out. So I thought, what's on this memory card? I don't remember seeing this. So I plugged it into my computer and it wasn't my memory card. It was a memory card a friend of mine gave me when I was about 22 years old. Again, just after becoming a Catholic. So I looked on the memory card and what was on it? Nothing but movie scripts. All the scripts of different films. And again, God was telling me something. So how do I discern God in my life? Spiritual direction. 
trust ask for the desire ask for the grace to keep going when it gets gets tough but then i also ask as well for confirmation and that's what i was getting for this acting confirmation after confirmation after confirmation and not too long after that i seen an advertisement on facebook for studying an intensive acting class at the new york film academy in california in near hollywood a place called Bearbank, and it's next to walt disney it's next to universal studios and straight away the desire was there i need to go there everything within me was pulling me towards it and of course we're in lockdown so how's that possible anyway i contacted them and they said i could come over i need a student visa and um I spoke to my spiritual director and he's giving me the green light to go as well. Everything is saying yes. But then I'm thinking, what about my dad and brother? You know, they're sick. My, can they survive without me? And I'm hoping they can, but I'm worried. But then all of a sudden, one of my friends who's a nurse just so happens to have most days off her job a week. And she said she's willing to come in every single day while I'm away, even if need be. And we, I brought her to the house. She met my dad and brother. And what a connection. I couldn't believe it. It was like the, the, they were best friends. And my dad's not even in the faith. But I think this is how God's going to get to him. Because they just connected so well. And now I have such peace of mind. So I'm due to go over there in September and do this course in um, Hollywood, New York Film Academy in Acton. And so that's how I discern God's will in my life. The desire has to be there. If you don't have the desire... To do anything, you're not going to do anything. And if there's no desire in you right now, which has been me for a long time, ask God to give you the, that, that desire. I say, God, give me the desire to do whatever it is you want me to do. Now, what do I mean by desire? What is desire? Desire means simply listening to your heart. That's what you've got to do. Listen to your heart. God speaks to us through our hearts. Now, biblically speaking, the heart is the conscience. So God speaks to us in our conscience. The conscience tells us what is right and what is wrong. And the church teaches we always have to listen to our conscience. Even if it's wrong, we still have to listen to it. It's a sin not to listen to it. So we have to listen to our conscience. Now, what if my conscience is wrong? How do I know if it's wrong? Well, I have to measure my conscience with the teachings of the church. So God has given us the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the body, which is the church. And so now I listen to the church and is what I'm doing in line with the Catholic Church or is it against what the church teaches? Well, so far, everything I've done has been in line. If it hasn't been, then I go to my spiritual director and he says, actually, John, this is what you should be doing. This is how you should be doing it. This is how you should be living your life. And so far, everything is lined up between me and what God wants, what the church teaches. And when it's not, that's when I have to go to confession. That's when I have to say, I'm sorry, and I need to start again. And so... All I can say is, if you want to know what God's will is for your life, live moment to moment. Know that God uses everything that's, that's going on in your life, that you're going through. Don't look at anything as a mistake, because that's not helpful. Look at every mistake as God's grace that works in weakness. Look at every single thing that goes wrong as God's way of going to use it to do something even better with you. Every mistake I've ever made, God has used. He's used to, to build me. He's used to change me. He's used to help me grow. And don't worry. You know, how many times I was worrying that I was wasting my life because I wasn't doing anything. But I had no idea that God was actually doing more than I could ever imagine. Sometimes you're not doing anything. And it's because God is busy. He's, he's busy preparing the ground. He's busy with the people that he's going to send to you to support you and to help you. And so it's all in God's time as well. You've just got to learn the hard way to live in the moment, step by step, moment by moment, second by second. Where you are right now, if God is in your life, if, if God is number one in your life, if you're not in serious sin, if you're going to confession regularly, then where you are right now is exactly where God wants you to be. And if it feels very quiet, then maybe this is the time to pray. Many times as a Catholic speaker, there would, there would be nothing going on. And I knew that was the calm before the storm. I knew this is the time to pray. And I was right. Because all of a sudden, there would be no time to pray. And all of a sudden, I'm speaking everywhere. And I'm too busy. And I'm tired. And I look back at those moments of silence. And I wish I spent more time 
in prayer. I wish I just spent more time enjoying the silence and listening to God. Now, how does this connect with you in your own life? I have to say, it's only looking back in hindsight that I realised that God was involved in any of this because in the moment, you just don't see it. It's hard to constantly be in the moment. We're in a world that's just travelling so fast that we can't keep up. But it's in hindsight, like I say, that's when you see God in your life. And so my message to you really is when you go away from here, when you go away from New Dawn, is just look back on your own life and see where God has been in your own life. And when you look back, also ask somebody to share with with you where God has been in their life. And you'll be surprised because God has been in your life before, before you were even born. He knew that you were going to have the life that you have now and the personality that you have now and the family that you have now. Nothing happens by accident. And God knew all of this, but we don't know it. We just live in it. But in hindsight, we see how God has been working and we see where God is. And so I would also encourage you as well to relax. Be easy on yourself. Don't beat yourself up when things go wrong. I've beat myself up many times. And it doesn't help. It doesn't work. Go to confession. Trust that you're going to be forgiven for your sins when you go to confession. Trust that God is in charge. And try not to be so controlling. My problem was was I wanted to control everything. But that gets in the way. God is the one who's in control. When God is in control, then I can relax. I can allow God to move. I can breathe. So don't try and control everything. Don't try and control everyone. Don't try and control people who are closest to you because God is working in them as well in individual ways, in their own personal way. And I know it's hard, especially because parents want what's best for their children. And children will probably say, my parents are so controlling. Parents have to trust that God is also in their lives and he's also guiding them. And it's good to have a conversation with your children. How do you discern God's will in your life how do you listen to God how do you know what God wants you to do and you'll be surprised because children are not as complicated as adults and sometimes we have to become more simple you know that's why I say live in the moment relax listen to the desires of your heart listen to what your conscience is saying listen to the teachings of the church go to your spiritual director but in the end it's between you and God listen to your heart's desires and allow God to really just move in your life and breathe and trust. Can you hear me?